Okay, so the uh, first scenario we're actually going to cover is going to be uh, the installation of our um, Falcon agent. Uh, to get started, we're going to go ahead and uh, double click on the installer. We'll go ahead and uh, acknowledge the EULA, hit install, and uh, within a couple seconds, the installation is done. Uh, once the installation is done, the uh, registration process with our cloud will take place, and there's nothing that needs to be done on premise whatsoever. Um, you will also be able to see that we registered with the Windows Security Center. Uh, where we are showing up as both the virus protection and the spyware for the OS. Now, since the installation just got done, uh, we want to show you how quickly you can actually go online and confirm in our UI that the machine is being seen. So we'll go ahead and grab that host name and uh, we'll go into our UI. And um, we're going to head on over to our host management app and uh, punch in the host name here. Once we go ahead and hit enter, we'll actually see an entry uh, for the host in question. And if I go ahead and click on this, you can actually see some additional details about the host as well. Now, the next scenario we're actually going to walk through is actually going to be dealing with uh, a malware sample. So uh, we're going to take a um, simple sample that is known to be previously bad, and we're going to try and execute it with Falcon host installed. And you can see that we got an access is denied error. Now, if we go over to the UI and head on over to the Quarantine Files app, uh, this is where we'll actually see the sample that we recently ran, uh, which machine it was ran on, as well as some additional details. Um, you can also see that you have the ability to both release and delete the file from here. Um, additionally, you can also see some of the, the VT count data. So uh, this is basically saying that 45 of the AV engines, according to virus total, will also classify this file as bad. Now, for the purpose of our demo, we're actually going to go ahead and release the file. And uh, we'll actually go ahead and uh, make some modifications to it using a hex editor here. And uh, we're going to modify it just enough so that the uh, attributes of this file, in this case the hash, uh, change. And we'll go ahead and give this uh, file a new name. Once we go ahead and change the file name, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, try and run the sample. But prior to doing that, um, we're actually going to go ahead and take the machine offline intentionally just to show you we're actually able to detect and prevent this sample using our machine learning model that's uh, sitting locally on the agent. Um, and uh, we're going to try and run this modified sample. Notice fairly quickly you've got an access is denied message and uh, the machine is still offline. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, restore the machine's connectivity so that uh, we can send these events back up to the cloud. Um, and that's actually done fairly quickly. Um, as soon as I restore the connectivity here and actually go back into my detections app, you'll actually see an updated detection showing up. And as a part of this detection, you can actually see that change sample 1.exe, the modified sample being detected. Um, and it's actually showing up as something that was identified by my on sensor machine learning engine. In addition to that, uh, towards the right, you can get some additional details about the detection in our summary pane. Um, if you scroll down a little bit uh, further, you'll see that the file was quarantined. Just underneath the quarantine file section, you'll also notice that this time there are no AV detections, primarily because the sample that we used this time was modified. Now the next section we're actually going to walk through is actually going to demonstrate how efficiently our uh, agent can detect and prevent uh, malware without really spiking up the, the machine's resources. So we're going to head on over to virus total. We're going to filter out the potentially unwanted programs, the adware and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, we're pretty much going to go after the uh, the top 25 malicious samples there are. Um, once we have those, we're going to go ahead and, and download them. There we go. We'll go ahead and grab all the files and extract them to a directory. Um, prior to uh, running them, however, we're actually going to go ahead and uh, use a little script uh, that is actually going to um, go through every one of these files and it's effectively going to append a null byte to every one of these files and uh, rename them. And the main goal behind that is to mutate the files so that their hashes change once again to demonstrate how we can still detect and prevent them. Um, so what we'll do is uh, run that script. Now, as I run this uh, script, notice that uh, the window 
behind the command prompt um, shows the file names have been changed as well as their hashes. Um, we're actually going to go through each one of these hashes and a couple things that uh, you want to notice are one, how the, the CPU itself is not really spiking any more than about 40% at max. Um, and every one of these files are still getting detected, prevented, and quarantined. Um, and within a matter of a few seconds, if we go into the UI, we have detections for every one of these files. And remember, these are mutated samples. We did not have any virus definitions. Uh, this was all done by our machine learning model that sits locally on the sensor itself. Um, you can see here the, the detections are pointing to the newly modified file names. They are still being detected by our on-sensor machine learning engine. You can see that the files were indeed quarantined as well. Now, if you go to the quarantined app, here's a list of all the files that just ran through, all 25 of them, and you have the ability to write from here, select them all, delete them, release them, whatever you like. Now, just to kind of recap, looking at some of the statistics, all 25 samples, mutated ones, got blocked, never really exceeded over 43% of the CPU, and on average about 50 megs of memory was utilized only. So very, very efficient compared to uh, some of the legacy AV vendors, as well as even some of the newer ones. All right, so, um, so far we have um, gone through examples of our machine learning, both in the cloud as well as on the uh, sensor itself. The next example is actually gonna focus on our exploit uh, detection and mitigation capabilities, which at times can be compared to some of the heuristic space capabilities of the legacy AV vendors. So, um, Using the exploit controls, we're going to demonstrate a heap spray based attack. Uh, prior to turning the prevention on, we're going to show you that the exploit is indeed working. So we have a little PDF arm that's uh, weaponized with an exploit uh, that's leveraging a heap spray based attack technique. And the acknowledgement of the knock knock neo box here, um, or the prompt I should say, uh, acknowledges that the exploit was successful. Now what we're going to do next is go into our UI and we'll head on over to our prevention policy that controls the prevention capabilities for um, the exploit technique that's being used here. And we're gonna go in and identify the, uh, the policy that maps to our host and turn on the exploit mitigation controls. Once we make the change, we'll go ahead and hit save here, confirm our changes. And uh, these changes uh, do go into effect fairly quickly on the host itself. So once we have made the change, we're gonna head on back over to our uh, victim machine here and uh, attempt reopening the file. Notice this time the uh, PDF file fails to open. So we'll go ahead and close here. And uh, if we head back to the UI and look at the detections page, we will have a, um, a new detection showing up at the top there. So let's go ahead and expand that and see what we have. And uh, right in here, you can actually see down at the bottom, the Acrobat binary um, being blocked because the file that attempted to be opened here was associated with a heap spray attack. All right, so the next scenario is going to be everybody's favorite ransomware. And uh, in this example, we're actually gonna show you how we can detect and prevent ransomware using both our machine learning uh, capabilities as well as our indicators of attack, which is uh, behavioral analysis. So at first, let's go ahead and turn on my machine learning toggle switches. And uh, we do have our behavioral indicators turned on here as well. However, we're not gonna be leveraging those in the initial run. So Let's make the changes and uh, go back and uh, try and run a couple samples. So we have a little uh, directory here with a few samples already ready to go. So let's go ahead and try running three of them. Um, so execute each one, one at a time. Here we go. And the third one. Notice each one of these samples are getting an error uh, from the OS basically uh, because our sensor is preventing that execution from occurring. If we go into the UI, here we have three detections. And you could see the activity was prevented and the, uh, the summary details, you can actually see that there are 45 AV detection matches for, from VT as well. And our machine learning engine is one of them, which is why we blocked it. 
Now we'll go ahead and uh, update this detection so that we can identify our next test run uniquely. So we'll just update this status. And let's also go ahead and turn our machine learning controls off, both of them. There we go. We'll keep the uh, behavioral detections on. Try running the same samples. So the samples attempted to run. We'll open a test file. You can see the file is not encrypted. That's always a good sign. Let's go back into the detections app now and see if we have any new detections. Here we have three new ones. This time, however, notice the description details. We are actually identifying the sample based on the behavior where we identified it attempting to delete uh, backup copies or based on the family of ransomware that they are a part of. Next, we'll go ahead and update these detections just like the last ones and uh, try something different. We're actually going to try running a PowerShell variant of ransomware. Uh, what if you're not dealing with any mutated sample of ransomware in the first place? So using this PowerShell variant, we tried running it. The file is still not encrypted. Let's go back into the UI. Over here, you can actually see that we still detected this technique because uh, it attempted deleting backup copies or shadow copies of files. And as a result, the prevention occurred. Let's go to mark this event true positive. Let's go ahead and just to have some fun, turn all controls off to show you whether or not this variant would have worked and uh, run our little technique here. Notice the files on the left just got encrypted. We also have a ransom note showing up. And uh, let's try and see if the data indeed has been encrypted. So we'll go ahead and take out the uh, encrypted extension and attempt opening the file. Notice uh, that was not successful. So the machine indeed has been encrypted. Now we will still trigger a behavioral detection for this to bring this uh, matter to your attention. And uh, in such occurrences, you do have additional options available to you. We're not gonna go in too much detail with those in this demo, but you do have a workflow that you could use to uh, start triaging this and potentially remediating this by at first containing the machine. Uh, we have options like network contain. Um, that could be used to remotely contain the machine and restore snapshots as well. Now the uh, last scenario we're actually going to demonstrate is going to be blacklisting where you could take any uh, sample that you would like to just globally block. Um, so to demonstrate that we're going to take a just a benign binary here that doesn't really do anything. Um, we'll go ahead and run it and uh, there we have it. You know, it just uh, pretty much just computed a hash, doesn't really do anything else. Uh, just to show you how you could easily globally block this, we'll take the, uh, the SHA-256 hash associated with this application and uh, add it to our uh, prevention hashes policy. Uh, to do this, we just head on over to our prevention hashes app. Uh, using this, we can upload a hash. And in this example, we'll just go ahead and use a single hash value since we just have one. We'll give the uh, policy a name paste the hash value that we just copied, hit apply, and uh, we'll choose the always block option since we're gonna go ahead and blacklist this. Hit it, uh, apply one more time and uh, attempt rerunning the application here. Notice this time the application was blocked and the icon also disappeared. Now we're gonna go ahead and head on over to the detections app and see if we have a new detection showing up. Over here, we can actually see that we have a new detection. And uh, if we expand this view, we can actually see the application being blocked because it's associated with the prevention policy uh, because of the hash that we blacklisted. And as a result, uh, not only was the application blocked, it was also quarantined. With that, we'll go ahead and uh, wrap up the Falcon Prevent demo. Uh, hopefully this was helpful for you. Uh, let's go ahead and open it up for uh, questions next.